So today we got a furnace that's making some god awful noise. So we've worked on this furnace several times over the years and it's an old one and it may be time for a new one. I don't know, but we're going to figure out why it's making noise and what the noise is. And it could be a rodent in the uh, squirrel cage or it could be uh, a, uh, a burner head that's uh, rusted out and the flame is making a lot of racket, uh, but I guess we'll find out. All right, we got us an old Atwood furnace here. Not sure what the BTU size is of it yet, but it is definitely the old Atwood. So let's get that cover plate off, to which I'm glad it has an outside access. Let's see if. Uh, we can hear something. All right. So some of them are Robertson and some of them are Phillips. And for anybody who doesn't know, Robertson is the square tip. The RV industry loves the Robertson. All right. Let's see what we've got going on here. Sounds like a wheel out of balance. Well, as old as this furnace is, I don't think they have a plastic squirrel cage in it. But I've seen it where those plastic squirrel cages, as the furnace gets hotter and hotter and hotter, it causes the plastic to expand. And if there's a crack in it, it just it makes it expand and it just makes it gets the rattle just gets worse and worse the hotter it gets. And, and they'll just explode into pieces. But as old as this is, I doubt that he's got a plastic squirrel cage in here. But we're gonna have to open it up and find out why it's out of balance like this. On these old Atwoods, they have this plastic frame around the furnace and it's just held basically held in by those screws I just took out and then these six little uh, tabs here you just straighten those guys out and then you can get the plastic face off and that's always uh, easier or said than done try not to break the plastic because it's old and brittle frame has seen better days. There we go. Yep, I can see right here the squirrel cage definitely came apart. Uh, as you can see right in there, you can see some teeth missing. So we're going to have to access that and see if we can find a squirrel cage for that. Woods, there's a little wing nut right here. All you gotta do is just loosen that guy up and then the whole control board platform slides out. But again, if the wires will let you do it. I'm gonna have to cut them zip ties. Let's see, let's take this off. Wire harness. Another screw I couldn't get out. And this cage is kind of grabbing that cowling. And here, and it does have a plastic squirrel cage in it. Surprised. Really, these older, older ones have a metal. Well, that right there is the reason why it is making such a rat. <laughs> well, getting the old one off probably won't be as hard as getting the new one in. 
So we got another wing nut here, like over there, but this one is for your exhaust tube. Just fatigue. Just fatigue. Mm -hmm. It's possible a mouse got into it, but I don't see any evidence of of, of a kill. All right, just a little spring collar there. I busted off some of those, but uh, time, age, heat busted off the other ones. So let's see if we've got replacements on that. So that nut that I thought I was trying to take off was just the end of the, of the fan shaft. <laughs> You're gonna have that. There was no nut to take off. It was just the spring collar holding it. Um, yeah, that thing may be older than he thinks it is. that I can get the new wheel in there. But then the question is gonna be, can I get the spring collar on? Because there's not gonna be a gap for me to do it from the side. I'm gonna have to do it from the end. That may be a little tricky. And thermostat. So at least now we can get this somewhat out of the way. Let's see if I can't get this in there somehow. I don't know if you can see. Probably be better just to just look on the old broken squirrel cage here, but you see that that shaft uh, right in the middle. Point to it, Justice. Yep, right there. The D-shaped shaft from the motor goes right through that, and then that clamp goes around that plastic. And, causes it to hold tight to that that shaft so now my question is is how do I get that clamp onto the new and we're gonna have to uh, see if I can't finagle in from the side there and get that on if I can get that on we're home free and if there was a better way to do this I sure don't know what it is Maybe there's uh, some old horns out there that uh, know a better way. It sure just would be nice if there was a gap through the teeth there. And they do have a gap right there. But what on earth are you supposed to do with that? I don't, I don't even know. You don't want to break any teeth by shoving pliers through there. Um, you know, I've got to be able to hold these down to open up the clamp and do everything that you've just said. I'm not entirely sure how to do all of that, but we'll try anything at this point. And the pliers might be just too long for that. I don't, I 
have to use some shorter ones. And these look about just as long here. And I do have some little ones here. Aren't those cute? They just kind of make you smile. But those little guys may be my, my solution. The customer says he's got some little vice grips that be kind of the same thing. The thing is just jamming me in my phone. I got it started. I've got it on there now, but I just need to scoot it down a little bit. So I was able to make something happen. All right, now of course, flashlight angles are always an issue. smaller my little slip jaw pliers that I hardly never use but they came in clutch today I've got that clamp on most of the way these needle noses would be ideal if I could get them in there those are a little shorter the uh, squirrel cage on and I just grabbed the wires off the motor or just throw some 12 volts to it and so that's a lot quieter and that is blowing a ton of air into my face right now all right so I say at this point let's go ahead and button it up put our wires back together and uh, and run it with some gas and uh, see what we got going on oh I'm so old I'm so old I'm sure there's people watching this right now going you ain't old but I sure feel it. I sure do feel it. You know what? That's. All I know is, is uh, our customer is smoking a turkey over there and it just smells amazing. It smells amazing. Right now, there's this uh, plastic wheel. If you will, uh, I think it's an air, like an air diverter to help draw air to the squirrel cage. I've got to get that lined up between the two halves here. Yeah, the newer furnaces are a little bit easier to work on. One more and we're wired up. I'm going to 
go ahead and bump it again just to make sure nothing's grinding or rubbing. Perfect. Good deal. Good deal. Now we can go ahead and do a test fire. Now on these old Atwoods and on the Dometic furnaces too, we've got to put the uh, exhaust back in because it needs that back pressure to stay lit. So when you're doing your test, your test run on your furnace, just go ahead and stick that guy back in. Otherwise you'll think you have a problem because it'll light up, go out, light up, go out. There we go. All right. Mr. Looper, will you go ahead and fire it off? I will do that. Power to my thermostat. No power to the thermostat. I may have accidentally blown the fuse when I was because I saw the blue thermostat wire sparking off the metal cage when I was trying to get everything wired back together. I may have blown the fuse. Goodness, the woes of electricians. Of course, an electrician would probably be like, "You dummy, you do it this way." Huh. Well. Go inside and see if we blew a fuse. There we go, thank God. I bet it's warm inside now. Whew. Man, I'm burning up out here. Well, anyway, I kind of wanted you guys to see. You just to get them tabs to go back through the, that plastic frame there, but sometimes, boy, they just really. Fighting. If you can get them tabs out, then the tabs just bend down over the plastic frame. You got like a bottle of water. No, I'm good, Mr. Looper. If you got the bottle of water, come here. Get them tabs to bend down over your plastic frame. And then up here, up over the plastic frame. And you can see there's not much frame left of this. We're trying. Basically, you've got your three holes on each side, three screws, three across the bottom, three across the top. But uh, that's how Atwood did it. You and Todd are outstanding individuals, I'm telling you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Work ethic or All right, so we got uh, we got old Mr. Looper taken care of, and as you could see, it uh, was definitely a blown up scroll cage. And uh, he said that he had that motor and scroll cage replaced about seven years ago, and I, I, I believe it did. It was uh, it was pretty dirty. It was pretty dried out. I mean, you got to think that hot air blowing across that that squirrel cage, churning that hot air all the time. It's going to be drying that plastic out. And anyway, had a big old chunk missing out of it. So we put him a new squirrel cage in there, got them uh, put back together, got it all wired up, gave it a test run, and she's uh, chugging heat like she's supposed to. So. Unfortunately, we've had to do a lot of work on that furnace, but a lot of it is just due to old age. It's, it's stuff just wears out. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, if you knew that going into the first repair, you'd recommend just a full replacement. But uh, it's just a little here, a little there, and and then uh, when it's all said and done, you're like, man, I could have bought a whole new furnace for what I've paid on this, but you just don't know. Hindsight's 2020. But uh, anyhow, his furnace is up and working now. He's uh, He'll be a warm fella, him and his wife. So anyhow, this is VLRV, and we're your friends in the RV business, and uh, we sure do appreciate you watching. And please give us uh, not only a like, but uh, subscribe, uh, click the bell. You know all the youtube -y stuff. Everybody asks and uh, we're no different. We appreciate everything uh, uh, you do in that regard, and, and uh, we'll see you next time.